as someone who's personally been in both treatment centers and seen therapists in private practice, I have wondered, you know, where accountability falls when you're in private practice. Like, what's the community you're working within that's able to assess your work? You know, and well, there's a certain kind of alchemy that happens between patient and therapist that's not in the public domain, that is not obviously amenable to quality assurance measures. Some of the core work happens around topics that are super private, like relating to sex and sexuality and identity. And so then what? Um, finding evidence-based interventions for such ethereal, complicated matters managed in a very private setting, and then trying to create quality assurance. Tall order. Yeah, that is a tall order. Do you think that um, having friendships, relationships, employment, those are sort of like assessments that would not get inside the room to such an intimate extent? You mean assessments of the patients? Yeah, or assessment, you know, if someone walks in and they can't sustain relationships and they can't sustain work and all of those things, and then, you know, a few years later, oh, wow, they're building a community and they have a part-time job and, you know, so they're moving in this direction of... Um, health. Health, you know, because those are sort of... Those are... And are those, by the way, markers of health? Like, I or think do so. we just say they are? I think so. Um, I think that clinicians are in a good position to assess patients. I mean, I don't think that that's as sweaty as society evaluating doctors, like health grades. Have you ever, do you know how health grades? What a problem for psychiatry health grades. Um, you know, many psychiatric patients are not entirely thrilled in general, um, and sometimes not with you as the therapist. And their rage with you as the, as the clinician may be because you're malfeasant. It may also be because you've confronted, you know, a nidus of psychopathology that's not heretofore been confronted and likely in the best service of, of the patient, right? But that may incur their wrath. So then they write on health grades like, what a schmucky psychiatrist. And from a, a very external standpoint, I don't know what to do about that. I'm a seasoned therapist goer, so I've collected data over time about you know what I think works for me. Mm -hmm. And because I've spent years in what I would consider unproductive therapy that didn't feel bad, but at the end of the day, I walked out none the sort of healthier, mm. you know, my life none the more, you know, none the richer mm. for those years spent sitting across from someone. And I feel like good therapy kind of isn't always comfortable. It you shouldn't know? be, but when should the therapy be more aggressive, quote unquote, or interpretive, or questioning. So um, it may be that your therapist, once upon a time, wanted m nothing more than to, to help you to see that the interpersonal deficit was X. Um, but it may have been hard for you at that time to hear that because it would have been so injurious to you. That's a judgment call. Yeah. And that relates to the idea about how do you assess a therapist? Yeah. Because how do you know if the therapist that you were seeing was using good judgment in reserving the more interpretive work for later and creating rapport infrastructure and a good feeling around therapy that longitudinally for you has paid mad dividends? Let's just take the simple example of an insurance company. How would a third party payer assess the merits of a treatment? That's why there's been this frantic energy over the last 20 years really around um, evidence. 